Welcome to Team Rocket Garage. We have something really exciting. Now, you guys know about Martha. Now, I ordered some engine mounts. They're made to order. So, we need to find something that we can do until then, right? Could be weeks away. Um, thought Mustang, gotta put an en engine in it. The town car, um, that's like dyno stuff and tuning, the town car. Considering giving up on that because it's got to donate its engine to the Mustang. So we got to figure out what to do. We got to do something with this week. So, so I thought maybe we ought to do this. Oh, not good at anything, but. Hit the subscribe button. So. We got the 240 i should do something with it just gas and oil it's, she'd run but um we've got the the town car here um she's a little worse for the wear box body but this is what i was thinking the centra it was a daily driver before i parked it because it got backed into and the car just meant too much to me um to let that happen to it let's turn this brightness down here huh there we go so I'll kind of give you a quick two minute run through here. There's a buddy right here. Hey dude, dude this fucker's huge. I could have mixed my finger up. That's a big boy. So <clears throat> firstly, it is not an SER. It is a 1.6 liter, 105 or 110 horsepower in line four. I remember like when I got it, I did a bunch of work, right? We did the cheap eBay um intake i wonder if that's even holding up yeah well i mean it's there it is it's bulging we did a video on how to put that in there uh link somewhere right here i think but um yeah so then it ended up with a misfire um right here where this whole spider used to live or this funnel spider um yeah so that fuel injector is new you can see i actually broke the plug doing that because it was really frustrating like there's not a lot of room i'm not going to stick my hand in there because of the spider holy cow there's mouse shit in here dude oh my gosh how is there mouse poop in the freaking car no focus on the mouse shit how is that in the car dude i don't have mice in my house it's right there dang dude oh i hope there's no like this car's only been sitting for like a year She's on coilovers, TDM. In fact, these coilovers cost more than I paid for the car. Or, I paid more for the coilovers than I paid for the car. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't know, man. I feel like we can just like go crazy on this. How's the... Oh, there's coolant in there. Let's check the oil. There's oil in there. Smells a little bit like gas. I think maybe there's like an injector issue or something. I know when I last ran it, I drove it out there, sprayed it off, and then put it back just for sake of it not sitting forever. But it was really, really putting. I think it's out of gas, I'm not sure. So we need to put some gas in it. Um, I got the gas can back here. But um, yeah, let's keep going around. Now, we've got a set of sweet 14-inch Bay wheels. These are legit and pretty freaking light too um one of them has a bend in it um i think i remember some vibration while driving or something these went on real shortly before it got smashed so other than that we've got massive audio speakers all the way around with tweeters and then you'll see this big port right here that is a port that goes to the subwoofer so this has a massive fourth order in it with a kicker 12 um yeah and then oh i remember the freaking door the hinge is bad but apparently the b13 and the s14 use the same hinge not that i'm gonna part this out for that but um yeah she's a manual and lower miles for you know a car this old oh daphne's going in there come on girl so let's go ahead and grab a battery for this bad girl and uh, let's go. 
found a battery just sitting back here, um, kind of under the bumper there, but let's see if, if she'll take a charge. Look at that, 12.5, that's not bad at all. Should be 12.8 if it's like freshly charged. Um, I think 11 is basically totally discharged, so this ought to do us just fine. The center's motor's really small anyway, so. That's about all we need for uh, getting her, you know, ready. I mean, we can just shove the key in there and see what happens. <laughs> oh, Daphne. <laughs> oh my gosh. Prime that fuel pump a few times. Hmm. Right, we'll see if it'll... Yeah, it doesn't crank out of gear. All right, well, something's not happy here. Um. Hmm. I wonder if, like, these spark plug cables are crazy cheap. I wonder if it's getting spark. Let's uh let's check. So got a new coil from AutoZone here. I'm gonna pop it in the Sentra and see what happens. Dude these guys juicy do you see this all right so we've got the yeah just cleaned all the spark plugs sprayed them gapped them scrubbed them sprayed them again um, we ran we turned the key and like let it clear everything out that was in there and then we put the spark plugs back in took the cap off here and uh, Clean that up too. There's oil leaking in there, so I'm wondering if I need to take the whole distributor off. Um, but we went from bit, like getting one strong spark every couple of seconds, um, and then I was watching the uh, spark plug fire while I was cranking it, um, and it was like pop, 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 pop. So um, hopefully this will be enough to get it running. Got about two gallons of gas, maybe three in the gas tank, plus whatever was in there that's really old. Nothing the same. Hmm. Oh, gosh. I don't know, man. I literally parked this car right here, like backed it in. It was a daily driver, it got hit and now something is wrong. Hmm. I need to check for grounding. Let's see. 
it's grounded well enough. Try ohms here. Put this guy on the battery terminal. Let's try the That isn't as like point blank as I'd like to see it. Hmm. I wonder if we could just clamp on to like right there, just give the engine a ground or something. Cause like this ground goes down here, but it's pretty like gross down there. Yeah, like really, really weak. So I'm gonna try that. Let's try that. Pop these jumper cables off that to the battery. And then there's the other end here. Here it is. So we'll do the right thing here. Gosh, that's fully restored. All right. So, now we should have no problem with grounding. Yep, just like that, nice and fast. All right, well, maybe that's it. I'm scratching my head though. Nothing. The heck? Hmm. Something's got to be wrong. I... Oh yeah, my dash cam, huh? Okay, so we've tested a lot of things and I've done some research. And I'm pretty sure that we need a distributor here and I'll tell you why. So there's a few different things that tell the computer in this car how to work. Now this car is a 1994, so the computer is a little bit simple, but not that simple. So we've got our coolant temperature sensor over here. <clears throat> that will tell the car like not to start if it's too hot. Um, so I unplugged that to bypass it. No change. I unplugged the throttle position sensor that can cause issues. Also no change. Unplugged the mass airflow sensor. Still no change. Um, there was a little bit of change when I unplugged the mass airflow sensor. In the distributor here is a few different sensors. So you can see that it's a little bit more than just a rotor and a cap here. Um, got quite a plug on her. So the distributor distribute spark to each of the cylinders and it sounds like we're getting basically one cylinder to fire um, the problem is that we need all four to fire inside this is a crank position sensor that tells the engine when to fire and when to trigger a fuel injector so this intermittent sparking issue that we have is probably coming from the distributor or the crank position sensor or cam position sensor inside of there that distinguishes where the cam and crank are based on the position of the distributor. So what we need to do is get a new distributor that will allow all of our spark plugs to fire, all of our fuel injectors to fire. I'm pretty convinced that this is the issue because I'm not smelling any gas. If you crank a car this long, you'll see gas. Um, I did also check fuel pressure. I've got the um, hose connected here um, and uh, to the to the gauge and we did have it at 50 psi uh, maximum roughly 43 to 45 so that's about in line for a standard fuel injection system so I don't think there's a fuel pump issue I don't think there's a sensor issue I think there's a distributor issue so we're going to go ahead and order one of them bad girls and see ya in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching Team Rocket Garage. If you like this kind of content, let me know in the comments. I've done all kinds of things. Trucks, my Impala, 
all kinds of projects, swaps, turboing things, boosting things, whatever. And this car is just near and dear to me. So if you like it, let me know so I can continue making stuff like this for you. If you don't like it or you like any of my other videos, let me know there too. That way I know what to make you so we can both be happy. This is a two-way road. Um, really, I mean, my therapist said that you and I need to talk. Um, you and I, we haven't really been communicating, right? So we um, we, we just got to do better. At commu you got to tell me what you want. I got to tell you what I want.